Hello. We broke the story about health concerns with those eco-friendly light bulbs. Our exclusive investigation forced Health Canada to jump into action. We got incredible reaction from Canadians everywhere. Hundreds of you contacted us telling us how you believe these bulbs are making you sick. So we decided to give you more. Here's Alison Vushnik with her investigation. Imagine turning on a light bulb and only 20 minutes later, your face looks like this. Brenda Ryder says it happened to her. When I uh, looked in the mirror and saw my face, I was absolutely horrified. I didn't exactly know what had caused it or whether it could be controlled, or whether it was short term or long term. So I, I was just completely aghast. And there are others. I get dizzy, weeping questions. I, I can't focus well, I, like I just open. feel all wrong. It's going to make a lot of people sick. They all say it was these, the curly compact fluorescent light bulbs making them sick. And when they removed them... Pain went away within a couple of days. And my hands started healing immediately. You won't find curly bulbs here anymore. Jane Pentelot changed all the bulbs back to incandescent. In her basement in St. Catharines, Ontario, Jane used to craft for hours, very close to the compact fluorescent light bulbs. Then a mysterious rash started to appear. On my arms, on my neck, behind my ears, down into my chest, on my legs next. I've had all sorts of blood work done and everything comes back negative, every possibility. Skin problems, headaches, joint pain, from turning on a light, hard to imagine. So we started investigating. So exactly what do the bulbs emit? First concern, it may be what's coming off the bulbs. Ultraviolet radiation. That's right, scientists say the bulbs give off UV, like the sun does. We know this because Health Canada, they're the people who make sure the products and drugs you use are safe, told us in an email that the CFLs are not provided with a prismatic diffuser that filters ultraviolet radiation out. Therefore, there may be skin sensitivity issues, especially in people with certain skin diseases. And they're referring to people like Brenda. She suffers from lupus and is demanding the bulbs carry a warning for everyone. Consumers ought to be aware that if they have a sensitivity towards UV, these light bulbs could uh, make their condition worse. So how much UV radiation do the bulbs give off? And if they can give off UV, can they cause skin cancer? Here's the disturbing thing. No one can tell us. Health Canada, the government agency that's in charge of protecting your health, well, they're testing the bulbs. But we've tried to talk to them for 10 months, and so far they have refused to answer our questions on camera. So after 10 months of no's and not availables, we had to go all the way to London, England to get some answers. It seems their government health people are happy to talk to us, and they have real science to back what they say, because they've tested the bulbs. It wasn't related to the brand or where we bought them. It was a random, uh, a random sample of them. About one in five were, were emitting unusual levels of UV light. Unusual levels. So we asked Magda Havis, she researches and tests the bulbs, to explain the UV. All compact fluorescent light bulbs contain mercury, and it's this mercury that's needed to produce the ultraviolet energy to cause the fluorescence to take place in the first place. And compact fluorescent light bulbs are everywhere, part of the push to go green. We're told, do your part to save the environment. And the old light bulbs, the inefficient ones like incandescents, are being banned in Canada in 2012. This doesn't have a filter on it, um, so this would emit high levels of UV um, that could damage the skin. Andrew Langford leads a UK advocacy group fighting to find out more about the potential dangers of these bulbs. We already know that it's causing things like blistering and um, skin sensitivity, but you know, time will tell as to whether or not the, the, the UV light is causing skin cancer. No warnings have been issued in Canada about UV. The British scientists also recommend these with the curly part inside a cover. They tested UV free. You can buy these bulbs in Canada as well. Good for you that you're saving energy, but I would also say don't sit right beside them until we know more. Dermatologist Dr. Cheryl Rosen says it's the same advice for children. They should be at a distance until we know more. I think 
the key point here is that we don't know the whole story yet. So what about the people who make and profit from CFLs, the manufacturers? For months, we contacted the big three, Philips, General Electric, Austin, Sylvania, and their Lighting Industry Association. Only Philips told us that they were investigating UV concerns. All three companies maintain their bulbs meet industry standards and are safe. But each time we asked for an on-camera interview, we were denied. Health Canada has never set rules for UV, so there are no rules being broken. If we're going to have these devices, there should be proper standards for them. So when Jane heard the warning from British scientists, it upset her. Their advice? Don't get too close to the bulbs and limit your exposure time. I'm upset, very upset that this has happened without any warning. There was no warning attached to these fluorescent bulbs. People should uh, be aware of this and avoid being in close contact with them uh, for, for more than an hour. As for Brenda, she found a doctor who treated her and her skin cleared up. She knows people who suffer like her are shunned, so she started a support group. No one really advised me or even, uh, I think, particularly believed me. I had a, a strong uh, reaction from other sufferers who said that it was such a relief to know that somebody uh, else understood and um, shared their experiences of these lights. Recently, Health Canada released new advice. Just like the British authorities, they now say if you are UV sensitive, use the covered bulbs and increase your distance from the CFLs. After the break on 16 by 9. What this woman is measuring is another health concern we are about to expose. There's no way of knowing that this is worse than the others just by looking at the package. Did you miss something? Watch our show 16 by 9 online at global16by9.com. Swirly bulbs may be causing more than just skin rashes. Our Alison Bushnick has even more information. In her exclusive investigation, she exposes something else that some scientists say can be potentially dangerous. Something you can't see or hear, but it may be making you sick. This is reading 580, roughly. So, once again, we have a really bad bulb. What exactly is she doing? Well, this is Dr. Magda Havis, and she's testing all sorts of bulbs for dirty electricity. Dirty what? Dirty electricity. An expert in her field, basically she measures power quality and radio frequencies that different bulbs give off. Do you see that's jumped up to over 400? So just one light bulb can give very, very high readings. And there's no way of knowing that this is worse than the others just by looking at the package. She says on her meter, for a bulb to be considered clean, it should read less than 50. A lot of people are responding negatively to these light bulbs. Um, they get headaches, they get other body aches and pains. Um, some of them have difficulty sleeping, they're tired. Um, some have mood disorders. Unfortunately, they have been told that these light bulbs might be making people in, in their home sick. So one light bulb gives 500. Can you imagine just two of them, four of them? But put them over to 1,000. Can I turn it off yet? All this is controversial. Scientists do not agree if people can suffer from what's called electromagnetic hypersensitivity. Basically, getting sick from the electronic devices we use and the stuff they give off. But what about the people we met who say they're suffering, like Larry Newman? I was just blindsided by it. Here's the thing about Larry Newman. He's Dr. Newman, a neurologist, and that migraine headache hit him like a truck. I can tell you from my experience, there is something about those bulbs that triggered my headache. At his New York clinic, he's seeing more and more patients complaining about the compact fluorescent light bulbs. Well, these new light bulbs, Doc, they're giving, I swear they're giving me headaches. So I want you to look right over there. He knows some will dismiss what he's saying. They'll say there's no scientific evidence linking the bulbs to headaches. It's never been proven. I can tell you from other patients that they definitely see a relationship to, to exposure to that light bulb and developing a headache. We just installed a new light that unfortunately is not eco-friendly. One of those patients is Amanda Gabbard. Right here, um, it's like just my forehead feels very warm. And I uh, feel the dull pain behind my eyes, a little bit of dizziness and a little bit of fatigue. In her home, you'll only find old-fashioned incandescents. She got rid of the CFLs. I'm very confused by it. 
it's it's kind of mind boggling. So I think it was just a light bulb. What can it really do? And isn't it supposed to be this great thing? And it's eco friendly and it's wonderful for the environment and everyone's doing it. Once stores start to replace their light bulbs and malls start to replace their light bulbs and everybody in their homes start to replace their light bulb, there's going to be a subset of people with migraine who who may not be able to venture out until they find a way around it. Health Canada says, yes, it's true. The compact fluorescents do give off radio frequencies, but they say the amounts are safe and thousands of times below limits that have been recommended. As for the lighting companies, they say their bulbs meet industry standards and are safe. Again, no one would talk to us on camera. Health Canada has a serious responsibility and they're not, they're not living up to that responsibility. They're right now just trying to deny that there is a problem without recognizing um, what they should be doing to actually investigate it uh, rather than just deny it blindly. Those who suffer say their health problems are real and there's more to it than just headaches. Kevin Byrne says his pain was like having arthritis. So convinced dirty electricity is, well, dirty, he quit his job to test other people's homes for what he calls electrical pollution. See, my meter starts to tick. That means we're getting into an electric field. So what's causing the electric field? Holy moly. That's your lamp. Kevin Byrne is searching for something in Rose's house he thinks could make her sick. Okay, you've got a reading of uh, over 800, 700 uh, gram stats or units. It really should be below 50. So, <laughs> so this is measuring the amount of radio frequency radiation riding on this circuit in your bedroom, which is turning this lamp here into a radio frequency transmitter because you have a lot of dirty electricity. There's that term, dirty electricity. It's something you'll hear Kevin say all the time. He thinks dirty electricity is affecting people. Sleep, uh, achy joints, pain, uh, a feeling of anxiety, stress, electro stress I like to call it. People charge up. They have all this surrounded by all these wires and electronics all day. Rose is raising two young children and suffering from lupus. She wants her house checked out top to bottom worried if modern conveniences are affecting her family. It's very frustrating, you know, because our home is supposed to be our castle, like, supposed to keep us safe, and to know that our home is making us sick. If that stuff, if it, it is what it is, if it's, that is doing that to me, what is it going to do to my kids? The health concerns are called electromagnetic hypersensitivity, being sick from all the electronic stuff and what it gives off. And there's a fierce debate about it. The World Health Organization says it exists, but scientists and doctors disagree if it can make people sick. Back at Rose's house, she doesn't care about the debate. She's not waiting for scientists to agree. She's having Kevin install filters, hoping they'll clean up her home. She just wants to sleep better and reduce any risk that may be out there for her family. It's scary, you know, I don't know what this stuff is doing to my children. You know, how is this going to affect them later on in life? Back to Magda and her testing of the bulbs. She's heard it all before. The doubts. Questioning whether they're really sick. Well, there's definitely something there. Uh, I mean, one of the ways that you can determine whether or not you're sensitive to the light bulbs is if you have them in your home, simply turn them off for a few days and find out if any of your symptoms disappear, the symptoms that you're concerned about. Okay, let's review. UV, headaches, skin problems, and of course, mercury. So the old light bulbs are being banned in 2012. Manufacturers are scrambling to create new ones. The best choice for the future may be these, LEDs, light-emitting diodes. No mercury, no health concerns, and way more efficient than the curly bulbs. But right now, it's compact fluorescence. People go to their doctors. Their doctors aren't aware of, of this as an issue. And so uh, very often they try to treat them and nothing, nothing seems to work. And, uh, and I think that's such a shame because it's such an easy thing to resolve. Health Canada still doesn't believe that dirty energy is a concern, but they now admit there are reports of some Canadians suffering headaches and depression after being exposed to CFLs. After the break on 16 by 9. I have 400 emails from Canadians saying that they're getting sick from these bulbs. They just want to know that their government is looking into the issue. What can I tell them? Did you miss something? Watch our show 16 by 9 online at global16by9.com.
have 400 emails from Canadians saying that they're getting sick from these bulbs. They just want to know that their government is looking into the issue. What can I tell them? Well, I will look into that. I've been in this job for two months, so um, I'm not aware of the study. We wanted answers about the compact fluorescent light bulbs some people say are making them sick. We went straight to the top to Canada's health minister, Leona Gluka. Why do you think Canada has spoken to I will look months? into it for you and get back to you. Thank you. Do you think she might be willing to put labels on these? And it was this conversation after months of requests that finally led us to some answers to serious questions people have been asking. People like Luann Jacklich. Okay. Luann may save animals people discard, but it was her own health that was suffering. Just felt kind of punked out, uh, nauseous and some dizzy spells. I'd find myself sort of blinking to focus my eyes. And I said to my husband, I said, oh, I'm getting dizzy. I'll be standing doing something in the barn, and I, I start to get dizzy. Then she saw our story on the bulbs. She decided to remove them. It was so dramatic, and it was so quick. The other symptoms were gone in a matter of days. I think that it, it had to have been the bulbs, because once they were gone, everything else was gone, too. That's it. They're all gone. They're all gone. Then there's Rose Morris and all that scratching. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm a mess. I'm basically covered in hives and skin problems, the itchiness, and it's been hell. Rose has lupus. British government health authorities tested the bulbs. They tell us people like Rose are more sensitive to the ultraviolet radiation the bulbs give off. These aren't immensely hazardous levels, but they were a surprise to us, and they shouldn't limit UV. It's very frustrating because, you know, my doctor, he's, he didn't know anything about uh, the light bulbs until I told him. He was shocked. And there are extreme cases like this one. Brenda Ryder says she only sat beside a bulb for a few minutes when this happened. I was just completely aghast. So why do the bulbs emit UV? We asked scientist David Sugarman to explain it. It has mercury vapor in it, and it's the mercury vapor that gets excited when, it, when the, an electric current passes through. And when the mercury vapor gets excited and goes back to being not excited, it gives off a little bit of ultraviolet light. That's what excites the coating and makes it give off light. And those long tubes do as well. All fluorescent bulbs give off a certain amount of ultraviolet radiation. But British health officials say the problem with the curly bulbs and UV may be how close we get to them. They recommend these cover types that you can buy in Canada, or to stay one foot away for one hour. People can actually get quite close to them for hours, and they may not be aware of the UV um, output, and therefore they might get some skin reddening. So these are the bulbs we took out, and now I really don't know what to do with them. And that's a good question for all homeowners. You can't just toss these in the garbage because the bulbs have some mercury in them and they may end up in the landfill. So they have to come here to a special facility who can handle the mercury. And have you seen this? It's a long list from the federal government of what to do if one breaks in your house. Mercury is a neurotoxin, so you really don't want to be exposed to this stuff. So what's in the bulbs that may make people sick? And were they tested before they entered our homes? For months, we've been trying to get an on-camera interview with Health Canada to answer some of these questions. For this story, they had agreed to go on camera, but then postponed. Then we met the health minister. 24 hours later, we finally got that interview with Health Canada. This is Robert Bradley director of Health Canada's Consumer and Clinical Radiation Protection Bureau. Our recommendations will be based on what the results are and certainly if, if there is cause for concern uh, one way or the other we will certainly act on it but we need, we need the information to determine what, what sort of recommendations to make. Health Canada is now testing the bulbs, testing for two things, UV and radio frequencies or RF. You see on the box it says the bulbs could interfere with radios, televisions, even remote controls. Just watch as this epidemiologist tests the bulbs with a simple radio. And I hate the, the thought that pretty soon the only bulbs you can get are these because 
If the radio can hear it, your body can hear it. It's present. I will look into it for you and get back to you. Thank you. Health Canada will be investigating RF. After meeting the health minister, one day later, she did look into the curly bulbs and told us in a statement, the health and safety of Canadians is the utmost importance to this government. Health Canada has initiated a study to measure UV emissions and electromagnetic field exposure levels from compact fluorescent lamps. Results are expected by fall of 2009. The companies that make the bulbs say they're safe and meet industry standards. We contacted the big three manufacturers and their lighting association. They all declined an on-camera interview. Compact fluorescent light bulbs are becoming more popular because they save energy and the old inefficient bulbs like incandescents are being banned in Canada in 2012. You're looking at the bulb of the future, LED, light emitting diodes, no mercury, no health concerns, but for now, hard to find and expensive. Tonight on Be Green, the dark side of compact fluorescence. Turns out they might be saving you energy, but costing you in other areas. Here's environment columnist Gideon Adkarni. CFLs of these curly light bulbs have become the symbol of the green revolution. But they might not be such a bright idea. First of all, they contain mercury, which can make them dangerous if they break, and they're difficult to recycle. But now studies show that there may be even bigger consequences to your health. They're nice looking and energy efficient and come highly recommended by, well, your government. But they might be making you sick because CFLs produce what's called dirty electricity. I Skyped with an expert in the field, Professor Magda Havis, to find out exactly what this means. Clean electricity is a, is a smooth sine wave that just goes up and down 60 times a second. And when you have dirty electricity, you have these spikes that are right on top of it. Um, and these are high frequency transients. And we know that they affect electronic equipment. And we're learning that they also have uh, effects on humans. Havis talks about the effects on diabetics. We can take a person who has uh, a certain level of blood sugar, put them into an environment where they're exposed to dirty electricity or radio frequencies, and their blood sugar will begin to climb. We can then move them into a clean environment, and their blood sugar will begin to fall. So we can turn it on and off just like a light switch. We've worked with people who have multiple sclerosis, and when they're in a dirty environment, their uh, neurological symptoms um, are bad, and when they're in a clean environment, they improve. Havis also mentioned one study in a school in Wisconsin. And one of the things they found with the students is that um, when they cleaned up the power quality in the school, they, they improved power quality. They found that 37 of the students who had asthma and required inhalers on a daily basis stopped using them. They stopped using them in the home and in the school environment, but they still needed to use them in the home environment. Let's go to my house now where Tom Nader, an EMF or electromagnetic frequencies expert, is helping me do an experiment. We want to see how much CFLs change the EMF field in my home. We start with a base reading. This is when nothing but the fridge is running. Then we try an incandescent bulb. No change. Ditto a halogen bulb. Now a CFL. Holy. Even worse, the effect of CFLs is cumulative. So more CFLs equal more dirty electricity the more CFLs you add right. throughout your house. Right. And in a typical home, I have, I counted in my home, I've got 50 light bulbs, right? And if I replace them all... Nada says there are viable options for those looking